I'm standing next to the 2020 Tesla Model 3 Performance with full self-driving features. Today we're going to do a review about it and we're going to talk about how it is to live with one of the world's fastest production electric cars. First we'll talk about the exterior and then the interior and finally we'll take it for a drive. Now normally I just go straight into the review but I spent hours and hours putting together a little 30 second clip explaining a little bit more about myself just for you guys. Check it out. That uh, didn't work. So let's talk about the front end first. I love it. I used to think it looked like a frog, like many people do, but you know what? It really grew on me and I think it looks pretty aggressive. I think it's very nicely styled. You have aerodynamic features with clean lines. The headlight assembly is very nice. All LEDs, of course. There's nothing ostentatious about it. It's not too flashy, but that's the cool part about it. You don't know, it's a super fast car. So it really differentiates the Model 3 performance from other Model 3s, so the 20 inch dark gray wheels, red Brembo brake calipers, and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. It really puts a bow on the whole performance package. So moving on to the rear, the sexiness continues. Very handsome rear. My only complaint throughout the whole exterior would probably be the LED light signature at night. It's kind of like an incomplete paper clip kind of shape. Not my style, I'd rather have clean lines, straight edges. Uh, nonetheless, still very nice. You got the carbon fiber spoiler and of course the red underline under the dual motor denotes that it is a performance version. I'll probably get rid of this um, for more, even more clean look. So now let's talk about the trunk. Like any other car, you depress the button right here and it will open and it will reveal 12.3 cubic feet of space. Now, in addition to the 12.3, you have a whole bay right here that's usually used for your charging accessories, but nobody's gonna be disappointed with the room in the trunk. You could also fold down the seats to get an additional large amount of room if you have long objects. There's a total of 15 cubic square feet in the Model 3, and up front, of course, there's no engine, so you have more space. Uh, I'm going to controls, and I'm gonna pop the frunk open, and uh, it'll reveal I've never put anything in here actually. Uh, the trunk has been enough room, but uh, you do have space up here for maybe a carry-on or something. That's the frunk. I do not like chrome, so I did what a lot of other Model 3 owners did and wrapped all the trim parts in 3M black material. I wish it came stock like the Model Y with all black. Chrome is for boomers. You hear it here first. The Model 3 has eight cameras, ultrasonic sensors, and radar to help with all the safety and convenience features it has. There are no regular metal keys for your Model 3. Instead, it comes with a key card. When you want to get in, tap the pillar. Car will unlock, hop right in. When you want to lock it, same thing, hit the pillar and it'll lock. But that's not the most convenient way. You don't want to be digging in your wallet for your key card. Instead, your phone pairs with your car via Bluetooth and it'll sense you. So you walk up to it, open the door, you can walk right in. Close it, walk away, and the car will lock automatically. All right, so now we're in the interior. You have everything a normal car has, except for a gauge cluster and as many buttons. I love the minimalist interior. Let's talk about the materials. I think the materials are super nice. Everything you touch is soft touch. Everywhere you put your hands is nice to feel. You got a long piece of wood going from door to door. Some people cover it up with various 3M materials. I like the open pour live wood look. I'm gonna keep that. But even up here on the dash, you have soft touch. I mean, you can't knock the inside. It's so much better than any entry level car, of course. And, if, and a lot of people classify this as a luxury car. And I think this feels like a luxury car with these kinds of materials. You don't get to the hard plastics until you're around the vents and all the way down near your feet. Moving on to the center stack, you get tons and tons of storage. This normally comes from the manufacturer as a piano black reflective surface. It's not a good look. It gets scratched easily, fingerprints all over the place. A lot of people cover it with a vinyl. I did carbon fiber to match the performance version. You pop that open, you got two places for phones, your passenger and you, and you can replace this with an aftermarket part to make it uh, charge when you put it on there. And if you open this one, you can lift this up to reveal 
two USB ports, and tons of storage down here. I mean, there is way more storage than any other car I've seen. Also through the USB, you can put a uh, solid state drive in here to record your footage for Tesla cam and sentry mode, which we will get to later. In here, you can remove this and, oh, what do you know? Anyway, tons of storage in there. On your steering wheel, you got two buttons and two stocks. Left stock controls the windshield wipers and the turn signals and your highs. Your right stock gear selection and cruise control. Your right button is your cruise control speed, forward collision warning, distance, and if you push it, it's your voice recognition command. Your left scroll button is mostly for your radio, tracks, and volume. Um, I am very pleased with the interior of this car. This is all I need. It's not a Rolls Royce. It's not a Mercedes S-Class. Most people are going to be happy with this. Everything in the Model 3 is controlled by a 15-inch touchscreen monitor. We're not going to go through every single thing because there's so much, but I'm going to do my best. So here's your home screen. Your map is super responsive, very fast, all satellite imagery with all, with all the street names. Very nice. Um, we'll start up here. You got your seatbelt sign, your gear that you're in currently, battery, percentage, your lights. You can pop open the trunk, pop open the trunk, pop open the charge port right here. It'll bring up your charging information. You can close it also. And here's your rear view camera. You can pop it up at any time you want. And the latest software update also brings up the side repeaters for even more HD views all around your car. It's amazing software updates for the win. All right, uh, here's your charging information you can recall. Here's your voice commands and uh, you can tell it to find addresses or whatever. We'll get to that later. Your windshield wipers from slow to fast. I always leave it on auto because you'd want as many things as possible auto. And you can swipe right to reveal trip information and go all the way down for your odometer and swipe left a few times to get to your tire pressure. We're not driving, so it's not gonna have that information. Hello, moving on to the map portion. When you wanna go anywhere, you hit navigate. You can store your home, your work, recents. And this thing, man, it keeps months and months of recents. I think every single destination I've gone to since I bought the car is here. You can go all the way back. It's all divided by months. And um, it's amazing. February, I went to, you know, all these places crazy so uh, or you can hit in an address to to get to uh, favorites you can store and then any place anytime you're hungry and you want to go to a random place it will select one for you nearby and then if you want if you're really bored you can hit lucky and it'll select a random place for you to go visit awesome so um, moving on you can slide this up this is your music portion and here's all your favorites right here you can thumbs up or down something. If you thumbs down it, it'll never play the song again. This is all powered by Slacker, a streaming service. If you want even more cho choices, here are all your genres. And you got talk radio, all these blues, whatever you want. Some uh, different DJ series, top stations, favorites. Uh, regular radio, which I've never used, is right there. Uh, for your phone, you tap it and it'll play instantly, whatever's playing on your phone. Um, here's karaoke, karaoke, which is uh, karaoke in the car it's not the real instrumental um just like any other karaoke but uh tune in for all your podcasts spotify which i do not have i'm sure that'll be awesome if i did uh tone this is one of the best stereo systems i've ever heard i grew up in a time where we were ripping out every single speaker in a car because they were cardboard and um putting massive subwoofers and amps and capacitors and you do not need to do this for this car balance I and you can turn off uh, DJ commentary, I don't know why you'd want that. Explicit content for audio settings. And if we get out of that, um, all these buttons below are just like quick buttons uh, for on the go. And um, seat warmers right here, front and passenger. Here's your climate control, temperature for that if you're an automatic. And um, you could, this is all controlled in this long slat on the dash, all digitally. Um, and your passenger has controls too. Pretty cool. All the normal settings. And here you can have all your seats warmed, including the rear middle seat, which is pretty cool. If you run in the store and you wanna keep the car cool, hit that and it'll stay cool. If you hit dog mode, it'll keep the climate control on and display something that says your dog is in the car, not to worry for onlookers. And cat mode will keep climate controlled all night until the battery hits 20%. And for all things in the menu, it displays what it does just below which is very awesome to have so you don't have to look in the menu or whatever to figure out what the hell it does so hold that fan button to turn it off and your front defroster rear defroster and volume control 
Now, we're gonna get into the car menu. Here's all your quick controls. If you wanna adjust your mirrors, you can do that with your left button on the steering wheel. Stay, same thing with the steering wheel, you can adjust it that way. Fold your mirrors, window, lo window locks, oops. Um, fog lights, exterior lights. Here are all your light controls, locks. Here are your keys that um, you can assign to phones and, and your key cards that come with the car. All right, and then uh, display. All, this, all the customizations for this display. You can switch it Fahrenheit, Celsius, etc. And here's where it gets more interesting. This is the performance model, so I'll keep everything on sport. Um, regenerative braking, you definitely want that so it can recharge the battery. It does it in small increments, but at least something. And then you wanna conserve battery. You can make it act like a, in a regular car by putting it on a roll so that the car will roll once you take your foot off the, the brake pedal, but if you push hold, it'll save battery. Tons of customizations for track mode. Here are your autopilot settings. I leave everything in beta so that I could have, I could have the latest safety features. And it's also just cool to have the, the best new features that Tesla's coming out with. Here's your navigation menu, just small settings and uh, how you navigate to places. Safety and security. Uh, save clips on honk. You can format your USB device there for sentry mode and, and Tesla cam and cabin overheat protection. Uh, I leave that on so when it gets really hot in a, on a Southern California day, it will turn on the climate control. Service, I've used, I've used this to reset my uh, tire sensors because I've had two leaks in my tires from running over things and software updates, um, all that information there. Here's another menu full of other things. You can use your phone book here. Uh, here's your calendar, which I've never used. Recall your camera here, but it's easier just to push that. Energy consumption, all sorts of data with that. Um, charging, already seen that. All right, here's your web browser. And usually I just use my phone because it's a lot faster, but here are uh, here you can have your own web browser in your car. It's, that's pretty cool. Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Twitch, Tesla tutorials if you have any questions. This is the perfect car to sit and chill in in a climate control environment, comfortable seats, and wait for your friends in the store or whatever you're doing throughout your day in a nice environment. Uh, and you can have full entertainment right here. Here's your toy box. And this is where it gets funny. Like people just ask me why, why would a car manufacturer do this? Here's the thing. I wish more car manufacturers took themselves less seriously and more companies in general and just had a sense of humor. I love this about Tesla. Here are your emissions. That's a whoopee cushion mode. You could turn it on and turn signals, fart on demand, press the left scroll wheel, Jesus. Wow. Okay, and then um, you can make beats on this. Here's one of my other favorites. It'll turn on the fireplace, turn on the heater, and some sexy music. And uh, I won't seduce you guys, but you also have a sketch pad. You can turn your entire map into Mars satellite imagery. Um, very cool. You're not going to get bored with this car. All right, and up here you have your door locks, which is no mechanical door lock sound, just a chime, pretty odd to hear. Don't ever have to adjust your time because it's always online. And if you touch the logo, you're gonna have more information, all your information about your car. Here's your driver profile settings if you hit your name. Um, valet mode, definitely key to have if you're visiting a hotel or a restaurant, that's fancy. If you hit this camera and launch viewer, it'll bring up your sentry cam and dash cam footage. And we'll go to one for an example and see what triggered it. The red dot signifies the event, when the event got triggered. So you can scoot up to this and we'll see what got near the car. All right, it's this woman on a bicycle. This is cool because if anyone approaches your car and perhaps scratches it, whatever, you at least you might have proof or license plate of what happened, who did it. All right, and here's your Wi-Fi settings. Always wanna keep that so that you can have the latest updates. Um, Bluetooth. Your phone's right there, easily accessible. Here's where you can get to where exactly you are. You can point true north or uh, in the direction you're headed, zoom out that way. Also here you can turn off the satellite imagery for quicker loading, I guess. Um, and here you could turn off traffic. I always leave that on. Here you push that, find all your superchargers nearby. And that's a quick overview of the touchscreen monitor. It should be noted that while every Tesla comes standard with autopilot, which enables automatic steering, braking, and acceleration within your own lane, this has the full self-driving software upgrade, which is a very expensive option that's increasing in price that allows navigate on autopilot, which is freeway on-ramp to off-ramp, overtaking the vehicles automatically, even through interchanges, 
It also allows auto park, the summon feature, which we'll get to later, and also traffic light and stop sign control, which is in the city streets assisted driving. If you get this upgrade, theoretically, your car will become more and more autonomous as Tesla releases features and local governments allow. So we're finally gonna take this for a ride. Here we go. Unplug your charger. Thumb first, open up the door. Oh, and I love how music just plays automatically when you sit down in the car. It's a beautiful thing. All right, put your foot on the brake. Uh, pause that. Put your foot on the brake and select your gear. Go up. Rear view camera pops up. Get out of here. And today, we're going to uh, the hardware store to get a bolt that I want. And you're gonna find yourself going to places for dumb reasons just to drive your car. Pretty cool, you can uh, see all the trash bins around, all the little boomerangs that you'll see when you get close to an object. Here, let me get close to this car. Will appear um, showing how close you are to them. Um, it'll offer parking spots if you're going slow enough and uh, you can put in an automatic park. It'll recognize different sizes of vehicles. And I call this the uh, confidence monitor because that's really what it is. The car tells you what it sees that you can trust it's gonna make the right decisions with all the safety features it has. Take me to Lowe's. All right, it's gonna offer a whole bunch of different Lowe's around and we're gonna go to this closest one, Paxton Street. All right, and it'll tell all the steps right here. Uh, initially, it'll be expanded like that, and as you keep on going, it'll collapse and zoom to where you are. One of the first things you're gonna notice about this car is how quiet it is inside. I have the performance model. This car is so fast. It accelerates so quickly. You're not gonna find anything on the road that's gonna beat you if you have the performance model, unless it's like an, an, an exotic that costs at least twice as much as this car. Whatever can beat you, you will feel okay with because they're gonna cost two, three times as much as this car. And if you have the rear wheel drive model, not the all wheel drive, even that's really quick. You're, gonna not, you're not gonna have any lack of speed with any range of the Model 3. Due to regenerative braking, you do not have to touch the brake. You take your foot off of the accelerator and your car will automatically start slowing down. And it slows down pretty rapidly. When you see the steering wheel, that means autopilot is available push the right stock down twice and it'll engage into autopilot. And we see a guy here on the bike, let's see what it does. It, it recognizes him on the confidence monitor. Slow down a little bit and we're still going. And the blue lines indicate it knows where the lane markers are and it'll give you this warning once in a while, apply slight training force. So you just gotta hold down the wheel and it'll go away. It does that for safety and it says that we're gonna stop at a traffic control in 400 feet, I'm not touching the brake at all, it's slowing down. And right now, this will auto steer, but it's not gonna turn left and right at stoplights. Um, and then when the, the light turns green, you have to confirm with the pedal, the accelerator, in order for it to proceed, and it'll follow the car ahead of you. Uh, it's, it's way different on freeways. On freeways, you'll be able to set it and forget it all right, so light turned green. I'm gonna push the accelerator and it starts going. Really, it's not that convenient right now on city streets because it only goes to speed limits and you wanna keep up with the flow of traffic. So I don't use it very much unless I'm eating like um, some Froyo or something. Uh, I definitely use it every single day on the freeway because it's pretty seamless on the freeway. Right now, they're in beta testing for city streets. So here's the freeway on-ramp and this is like, of course, the place where you can step on it and uh, you won't get a ticket getting up to speed. Exhibition of speed. Ah, feels so good. All right, 87 miles an hour coming on the on-ramp. Usually I like to get to the lane I want to be in and then turn on autopilot. This is the maximum speed that I've assigned it to and this is the current speed. So if a, a car stops ahead or slows down, it will slow down like it just did. It'll say apply slight turning force to wheel and it wants to turn, get get into the uh, carpool lane. We'll let it do that. And I have the setting for it to switch to lanes automatically. And really it's not automatically, like you still have to put your have your hands on the wheel and it still has to know that you are uh, paying attention. A lot of people say that they would not trust a car to drive them. And look, I was kind of like 
kind of apprehensive at first, but I think this is where technology is going. I want I wanted to trust it, and it has definitely made me trust the technology. Like if there's a bridge or something, and, and the center divider kind of pops out, like I'll put my hand on the wheel. But generally, like if it sees the lane markers, then it's gonna know to avoid that. Uh, very smart, very intuitive, and it really just makes your day so much more convenient not having the burden of driving. I know it's a first world problem. If you live in a in a metropolis and you're always dealing with traffic, autopilot will take, I'm not kidding, 80% of that burden away from you. Elon Musk and Tesla has done to the car what Steve Jobs and the iPhone did to the phone back in the day. Bold claim, I know, but the adaptability hasn't been as big because there's a bigger entry, you know, more expensive entry. It's a car instead of a phone, so we haven't seen such a wide adaption. But I feel like this is how all cars are going to be, man, with a adaptable user interface, not nearly as many buttons. Everything you need is right here in the screen. I don't struggle to like find things. You get used to it really quickly. All right, so I'm going to be late to my dentist appointment. I'm going to push the voice control command and call my dentist and let him know I'm late. Call Dr. Wilson Dentist. Pretty seamless. Very clear. Good morning, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Harrison's office. Hello, this is Frank. I'm going to be uh, 10 minutes late. I'm sorry about that. Oh, okay. I'll let her know. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Damn. Did you hear that slam? No, something that's going to reveal itself time and time again is the theme of convenience. And you could tell that Tesla really had the consumer in mind when they thought of the design of this car. For example, when you put it in park and you're blasting music, you open the door and the music slowly fades to provide a nice calming exit. And why you want this feature in every single car for the rest of your life after you experience this, I don't know, but it just makes sense. Check it out. You close the door, music stops. Then when you want to get back in, open the door, music continues to play. It's like your life has a soundtrack to it. One of the most awesome and lifestyle changing things about having a Model 3 or any electric car is coming home at night, plugging it in and having a full charge the next morning, just like you would your cell phone. No more going to the gas station and spending a whole bunch of money every single week on petrol. This will charge with any 110 volt outlet, any normal outlet, but you're only gonna get about three miles per hour of charge. It's gonna take days to fill up your battery. You can go to the supercharger, which will charge the battery very rapidly, but it's gonna degrade the battery life if you do it constantly. It's still going somewhere to fill up your battery. It's not very convenient. You might as well go to a gas station and it'll take a lot less time. So the proper way and most efficient way to charge your car at home is to have a 240 volt receptacle located wherever you rest your head and wherever your car rests its tires so that you can have a full charge every single morning. This will give you 30 miles an hour charge. You'll have a full battery by the next morning. It's very convenient, awesome way to do it. You definitely want a licensed electrician nice. installing this 240 volt connection. I did it with my friend who is an electrician. Here's the video link. Once you have that installed, you take your connector, push the button on it. Before anyone buys an electric car, it's imperative to decide how they're gonna charge it. Not only do you have to pay the premium upfront price for the car, but you have to have a place to charge it. So you have to have a fancy apartment building that you rent or own a house with a, a receptacle that you installed. It kind of limits the people who can buy these cars and you definitely have to plan if you are interested in buying one. A lot of critics say that Tesla has bad paint and fit and finish. And look, when I took delivery of this, I definitely went through it. And I noticed some small issues, but nothing huge. And so I was satisfied and I took it home. And the fit and finish, as far as the panels, are not perfect. But I don't know about any manufacturer that is. And honestly, do I really care that much about a one or two millimeter difference in panel gaps? Not really. It's, there's nothing that's obscene about the fit and finish. And when you get in and drive this, you quickly forget about it. So I'm overall satisfied with my fit and finish for sure. But let me tell you, do not get black if you are a perfectionist and need to have your car looking 100%. Obviously, this is, this is known, but like you can cough on this and it will scratch. The Tesla app is one of the main reasons why this car is such a breeze to live with on the daily. You got your charge up here, your, uh, the state of the car, it's parked. Um, if you want 
quick control. You can turn on your climate control with one click. Um, you can open your frunk. It's going to ask you to confirm it instantaneous and it'll show the graphic. You can unlock your car, boom. For phone key, it's just going to tell your status that you are connected because you are within range with Bluetooth. Climate, you can turn down your climate. You could turn on the uh, seat warmers, your defroster. Pretty awesome to precondition the car on a hot or cold day. Controls, these are all your general, general controls. You can flash the lights. You can start the car like remotely from anywhere in the world. Uh, if you have someone that wants to drive it or needs to move it, you can hook your trunk. You can even vent your windows or close them. Valet mode if uh, you are at a restaurant or a hotel or something. And sentry mode you can turn on. It's off right now because uh, I've assigned it to turn off at the house. There's no need to if it's parked in my garage. All right, um, see what else we got. Charging, you can, um, if, you, if you're going on a trip, you can turn it to 100% uh, to charge immediately uh, so that you can use the full extent of the battery. We'll leave it at 80%. You can open your charge port. All right, you can close it also. And then here's all your nearby superchargers for convenience or destination chargers. Here's your location and summon. This is uh, something we'll, I'll demonstrate for you in a little bit, but you got to close all the doors to use that. And then here's your upgrades. If you wanted to upgrade to full self-driving or, or whatnot, um, I already did that. Service, here's how you s schedule your service or roadside assistance. Um, it's all through the app. That's the extent of the app. I'm super happy with it. I wish every car had these capabilities. Software updates, what does that mean to you? Well, usually it's a term associated with our phones or with applications. If you wanted to update a car, you'd have to take it to the dealer and they'd flash the latest version of their software on it. No longer is that needed because Tesla does it over the air for free and it is amazing. It's like having a new car every few weeks with the latest features and sometimes even performance enhancements. Tesla's cars have gotten faster with software updates, crazy. Um, autopilot has gotten so much better even while I've had this car. So let me take you on a trip to the latest release notes that I've gotten. And this is, uh, we're in June, 2020, um, GPS update. We got it just the uh, improvement on the stability and tracking of the location of your car. I got a new game. We got fallout shelter. I played it for a while. It's pretty cool. Theater improvements. You can now control a whole bunch of stuff with the steering wheel buttons. You didn't used to before. And then this has a music producing program that uh, it's called tracks and there's improvements to that software updates just one of the reasons why Tesla is so far ahead in the tech game I'm sure you've heard about summon the ability to control your car with your phone uh, we are in a empty parking lot right now to demonstrate this and I have tried it with a busier parking lot but honestly it's really slow and you don't want to waste people's times that are pulling out we're gonna go into the Tesla app and we're gonna click we're gonna tap on summon hit smart summon and um, make sure that you are right at your target. Hold go to target and your car will start moving on its own with the phone. It's a little slow, but you want it to be slow. I mean, it's driving itself. It's probably a good thing. And I feel like this is most useful if you have like a lot of groceries or heavy objects that you want to just place in your car. And instead of going to your car, your car can come to you. And it's well on its way. God, it's sexy. And it's only going to get so close to us before we, God forbid, have to walk to our car. Um, so when it stops, you then have a little bit more ability. Go back to the summon area and then hold forward, and it'll just march directly forward. And this is this will go real slow. Um, this is just for like getting out of tight spaces or. Uh, other various instances and this is just to demonstrate I would obviously never do this but um, car is moving on its own and I'll go up to it and it'll sense me and I'll stop automatically and there you have it there is summon Tesla service gets a bad rap so let me share my two experiences with you guys uh, when I first got the car I got a flat tire it was my fault I hit a small low-rise curb on a center divider one night very bad thing to do and it bent my rim so I had a slow leak scheduled a Tesla service appointment on the app a guy came within an hour to come swap out the tire give me a loaner I got the rim repaired and I got my wheel back on 
that was it, no charge. I dropped the tire off at the ser service center. The second service request I made because my alarm kept on going off in the heat. A guy came out, was here for half an hour. Uh, he soldered a, a bad soldering point in the trunk because that was the part that kept on um, saying that it was open and caused the alarm to go off. And yeah, uh, th that was it. This guy also told me that he was on the development team for the Model 3 and his job was just to beat the hell out of this car, see what broke and fix it. And it really gave me a lot of confidence in Tesla's design and uh, R&D process. So overall, pretty decent experience with Tesla service. Now I know I've been talking this car up a ton and it does everything superbly, almost everything. It's not all puppy dogs and ice cream. So I'm gonna mention a few things that in my mind are drawbacks. Two of them have to do with aesthetics. I don't like chrome. I think it should come standard like the Model Y or at least have the option to have blacked out chrome. I will pay more to have no shiny stuff on the car. The piano black, plastic pieces in the interior. I covered that up too. I don't think anyone likes the piano black interior. Let me know in the comments if you do. Another thing is I would love some cooled seats. This car does climatization very well. You can control with your app and I always remember to climatize it before I get in a hot car or whatever. So it's never really a factor, but I like some cold air blow to my ass. It'd be awesome to have that and there's no option for that. Um, so maybe in the future updates, uh, future generations, Tesla will release that. Last thing is that I love the user interface. I love how everything's in the screen, but it's inevitable. It's a computer, it will glitch. So I've had to reset it a few times. And at that point, you don't have any information, your speed, no music, it's quiet, it's weird. Um, it's happening less and less because of the software updates that have been coming through. So I'm not expecting that to happen as much. I have, in fact, it hasn't happened in a few months, but that's always something to consider. You're driving a giant computer. Those are the drawbacks of the Model 3. This car does many things so superbly, you forget about the small things. I think there's something to be said about intangible value when it comes to this car. And not only this car, but all cars. When you have a new car, you are excited. You wanna drive it. You don't buy cars for logical reasons. You buy them for emotional reasons. If I, would, if I wanted to get from point A to point B, then I would just buy a $10,000 beater. But that's not why car people buy cars. And I don't think that's why a lot of people buy cars. I think we have a car culture worldwide definitely in America, definitely in California, definitely in Los Angeles. I just want to make a point that this car has definitely the highest intangible value um, I've ever encountered in driving something. It's the best daily car that you can get on sale. I'm not kidding. Please drive one, whether it is the performance version or the base model. I know there's a lot of fanboys out there that are obsessed with Tesla and anything you say bad about the company, they will get up in arms. I like to pride myself on not being one of those people. I thoroughly enjoy cars. I read about them every single day. I researched a lot of cars before I bought this one. I wanted a fast one. I was considering the GT350, but why would I get that when it's the same price, when this is so much smarter, so much faster, and I don't even have to pay for gas afterwards, and it'll be the same payment. Um, that's what really persuaded me to get this car uh, the Model 3 performance over something like the GT350. Thank you very much for watching this. I spent a lot of time making this. This is a, it's a long review, I get it. Thank you for sticking through if you have or watching any part of it, honestly. If I can entertain you in the least amount or help you make a decision about the next car you're gonna buy, whether it's Tesla or not, um, I think I've done my job. So I appreciate your time and I'll see you later.